I have to introduce myself. So, uh, so I must say that I, um, I did my degree here as a very, very mature student um, with UC, and um, I sort of reverted to, to being an, the undergraduate that I had never been and started drinking lager in vast quantities <laughs> and embarrassing my children. But, um, <laughs> One of the good, some of the good things that came out of it were the synergies, creative writing in academic practice that Lucy and I and Caroline and Dizzy and a whole lot of other people did in a very experimental way. Um, and I think one of the most important things that came out of that was the importance of um, looking at hierarchies differently. So, the teacher and the student and the, the importance of the round table in fostering creativity and confidence. Um, so I'll just read some poems. Um, my first poem, which I'm going to read because I read, the last time I read it was here. Um, so it's called Lupins. Lupins, with their peppery summery smell, filled the brimming moment to its rim lifting the shadow my father left by dying. Eight years of living with my mother's grief, wiped clean by the heat and promise of the day, and I, a small child, tending my garden, shedding the past for that moment's clarity, absorbed and delighted by the task of simplicity, planting stones in a rough circle, turning up worms the colour of corsets, Hardly aware that time was passing, the smell of gym shoes and grass being cut, or the way the heavy summer air curved the sound of four o'clock striking. Now you pins always remind me of you, how you lifted the stain of childish sorrows, kept the day bright like a sun-warmed garden, until night came and our spirits ventured silently hand in hand, without fathers, black as lupins at dusk, setting out against a tall sky. Um, and before I did my degree in English, I actually trained to be a painter at the Boston School of Art. Um, and I write quite a lot of ecstatic poems at art. This is called Sur de Pont des Arts. <coughs> He's looking at a painting of a river and trees, houses roughly charcoaled in against a foggy smudge, a foreground block that could be a terrier shadow, or a black hole of invisible light, dark matter sucking viewers into the artist's untidy mind, showing them the dissatisfied wife left clearing plates after a silent Sunday lunch, the son who bores him the treasured daughter who ran off to the Pyrenees with a specialist in sustainable energy who builds houses out of cartons and solar panels where rotors of guests are needed so they can pee frequently in order to keep the bathroom lights on. <laughs> He's looking at a, a painting of a river and trees and thinking about his mistress whom he hasn't seen for three weeks because she's gone to stay with a sister he knows she's just invented. Now he's thinking about his hat, a smart Homburg, and how superior it is to the artist's sloppy hat, which is hiding, probably, a mess of impasto passing for grain. He's thinking of the terrier who has just caught up and is now regarding him with small, adoring eyes. He's thinking it costs him more to feed the terrier and buying the new Homburgs he prefers to his wife. He's thinking, his mistress is a liar, the artist is an imposter, the artist's wife and son should leave, the artist's daughter and her husband are complete fakes, and that his own wife is less attractive than a hat. <laughs> he's thinking that his terrier is an expensive expressiveness. In fact, he's wishing he was someone else. He's looking at a painting of a river and tree. <laughs> and, um, I heard from my next election, which I hope is going to be published next year, I hope in March, in time for the Oxford Literary Festival. It's um, 
My father fought in the First World War in Mesopotamia, and it, I've done a lot of research trying to build a picture of him, um, and during which I've interviewed a lot of Iraqis soldiers, um, and the book is called Taking Mesopotamia. And this is a poem for a Muslim Iraqi poet called Adnan al Sayed. And I want to just say, um, when the other readers have been reading, when Adnan is translated from my poems into Arabic, we're going to give some readings within Arabic and English with Iraqi music. And, but when um, Iraqi poets speak, there's lots of ah, hmm, from the audience. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of times when I, I'm the fellow readers are reading, I want to say ah, hmm. <laughs> Um, but we're um, sort of more polite to sing it. So this is called Swimmer for Adnan al Sayed. Trust water and it will carry you. After all, it was our first element. Our aqueous cells cry out to be reunited, go tapping along inside our skin like blind prisoners finding ways back to fluidity. Now my hands push forwards through the gather into a nimbus of breaking air, and I see you move deeper to a region of mud and reeds, or your feet shape harrow sketchy clouds as you break the wet lid of the river, spray the Euphrates with falling diamonds. Back then what you fled was the midday heat and your father's sickbed, your mother, frayed by the burden of constant want, Later, the soldiers rough, the dirt of spent cartridges after they'd done their bloody business. You, a poet, darkened by contaminants, restless with visions, Nimrod's inheritor, buoyed by rifts of thought as stateless as the fish you swam with. Now you have another river, feel the pull of other tides that have brought strangers to the weather of exile since the Romans. Your voice travels out, heaped and precious as the Rhonda coals, my father's uncle shovels. Miners like those who sang to Jesus as to near torches rose, up the shaft towards them, their wives leaving spitting kettles to run from their kitchens, drawing to shawls tighter, suddenly old as light pearl, the pit's last candle drooping like a hanged girl. Thank you.